let's go on to Thursday. If you look on page 19, okay, we're going to build on the routines of yesterday. Remember, yesterday was the first full day. So we're going to be at the, at the doorway again. And this time, when they come through the door, uh, put your materials away, pick up a piece of paper, and uh, do what it says on the board, okay? Three instructions, okay? And what they're going to do is take the piece of paper, fold it in four, and draw a scene from yesterday's story. Okay? Simple thing. And what you're doing is getting an, a, a routine going so that while you're doing attendance and so on, the kids are active, that board work pattern. Okay? And then um, after, uh, after they've uh, done the first thing, I, I want to just talk about what I call share and agree strategy. This is the most common strategy I use. And basically what it means is talk with your neighbor and when you agree, put your hand up or when you're done, put your hand up. And I started it with math, have two kids uh, work on a question together and uh, if they disagreed, they had to figure out what the other person, why they were different and figure it out what the right answer was. And when they were done, they put their hand up. So that's why I always call it share and agree, okay? But I use it in language arts a lot when I'm doing those read-alouds. I'm going to ask them a question and say, share and agree with your neighbor. Okay? And then while they're talking, I'm going to have that, uh, uh, my class list and I'm going to be listening into the conversations. Okay? The great thing about it is it gives, uh, instead of just one person answering, you've got 15 people talking. And you know, uh, when we speak out loud, it helps us organize our thinking sometimes. You know, we can, also, if we're shy, if you're a little bit shy, then uh, shy students can test their ideas uh, on, the, uh, on their neighbor. And and then they have the courage to put their hand up, right? So uh, share and agree is just a great uh, strategy. Now we, what we're going to do when we're doing our, our read aloud is we're going to transition from uh, the read aloud to making a, a, a personal web, okay? What I do is one year I do Matilda, Roland Dahl stories, Matilda and the witches, and I just switch. One year I do one, because I get the same kids again, I can't use the same story. So, and basically I'm gonna talk about uh, Matilda, and, uh, and after we've read, you know, in the beginning of a story, they usually describe the character. So when I'm in there in the second or third chapter, uh, then I'm going to pause and I'm on the board I'm going to start writing some things. Okay, what is Matilda like? Okay, she's about five years old. She's got brown, straight hair. Uh, she's a sh sort of small. She's really friendly. Um, she's really, really smart. She can already write and read. Maybe she can already do algebra or something like that. And then her brother. Okay, her brother is about 11 years old. He's a bit heavy. Uh, he's uh, kind of sloppy and mean and, and lazy and so on. And that's the, the two characters. Then we'll take a look at those characters and we'll try to say, okay, what, uh, what, uh, what of these characteristics of these characters are similar? So we might get some things around appearance and it might circle all the things that are what someone looks like, okay? And so what we're, and then I'll put uh, in the middle of it, I'll put a, a, a thing on appearance, for example. And so what I've done is I've made uh, a category Okay. Now, Marzano says that categorization is the number one, uh, has the largest effect size or improvement size. It's the best strategy for learning. You, if, you can, if you can categorize something, you understand it, right? You can't make a good category if you, if you don't understand it. And so what we're going to do is after we've rehearsed it with the, with the story, then I'm going to get the kids to start working on a, a web, personal web about them, about them, a personal web about you. Okay? And so I'm going to give them a, a, a piece of paper, newsprint paper or something uh, to uh, start putting some things down. First of all, put lists of things, all my hobbies, my favorite TV shows, my family, uh, holidays, whatever they, uh, they, they want. And then we we'll start turning them into a web. So let's just, just uh, show you uh, what that might look like. So we might have... Um, we might have a, a something like this. So this student and his family, his abilities, his interests, and, and so on. Okay, and then they put uh, put webs around that. So they categorize this. Okay, and so in the first week, um, they're just going to work on the rough copy. They won't get to the good copy. 
Okay, but when you've got your permanent class, uh, you're going to go right through to make a, a, a good copy. Uh, one of the things that uh, I do is always get the kids to write horizontally, so it's not so hard to read. Okay, so they're going to write it horizontally, and we're going to have uh, uh, obviously when they finish, they're going to have a lot more than when, when they're just starting. Okay, and one of the other things I, I, um, I like about this is it's a great final report strategy. A web is a wonderful, you know, poster kind of thing, or a web is a wonderful way to collect student knowledge. Okay, it's great because you can just look at it and almost instantly you can tell, does this kid get it or not? If you got two kids that are working together, um, I get them to, to give me a little oral report about part of it. Okay, tell me about this part. Okay, so they give me a little two minute oral report and then I ask them questions about the rest to make sure that they understand it so they're not just the person who did all the coloring. Okay, so they're, they're very uh, good and it's way more, it's much faster uh, marking a, a poster uh, than a report where you have to read page after page after stuff. So, so I use uh, these a lot and um, it's a, it, this is a great teaching way of, t of learning this. And of course, uh, posters can have you know, whole paragraphs and pictures and all that kind of stuff. Okay? So making a, a personal web is a great project. The parents love it. You can put it on the wall and kids will enjoy uh, looking uh, uh, at it as well. Okay? So uh, when, when we do our read aloud, uh, we're going to focus on the, ca uh, the characters. Uh, we're going to uh, start uh, getting the idea of that characters have characteristics, and we're going to make up categories of those characteristics, okay? And then we're going to repeat it uh, for our, our own personal web. So we're going to change it into uh, our own version for ourselves. And that'll certainly, um, you know, takes, uh, you, you won't get that finished in the first week, that's for sure. Okay. Um, I also uh, really try uh, with the better students. One of the things I, I like to do in w in webs is try to get cross links between categories. And I'll say to the better students, if you want to do really well, really s show me that you can make categories and uh, links between categories. So, for example, hockey could be an entertainment, could be a favorite TV show, but it also could be an activity, a sport, or something like that. Right. Uh, so, so you, can, you try to uh, get links between categories as well. And that's uh, abstract thinking, right? It's categorization and abstract thinking. So it's a very powerful um, strategy to use, okay? All right, so let's, uh, um, after we've done the read aloud um, and the personal web on uh, page uh, 20, over to page 21. Uh, we're going to do uh, an addition game. I, I won't go over it uh, uh, today, but it's basically a tool, a dice game. The kids add, um, make two-digit numbers and add them up uh, to make 205. And the first one to finish wins. The kids like it. So when you're coming in after recess, you give them one dice each. They pair up or you pair them up and uh, then they play the game. But you're also working on how can you uh, work with a, a I'm going to have them model it so that they're not, um, uh, so that they're playing properly. Show them how, where to, uh, for example, I had the students do it on, on the floor because uh, we didn't have lino. And uh, so I'd have the kids to bring a book and write it. So you want to do some, what I call body language teaching. Like what is it, what do you look like? If I'm looking at you, do you look like you're playing this game well? Okay, or do you see two people looking this way and someone else is looking the other way, right? Body language. So I'm teaching body language uh, as well uh, through that game. Okay, um, uh, on, the next, uh, on the next page, uh, the top of page 22, there's a bit about the number skills uh, pretest. Basically, you can download an arithmetic page which has all of the uh, kinds of arithmetic that someone should have done in the previous grade. So if you've got a grade five student, it's a pretest for grade five. It means it's the grade four curriculum, okay? And it's not just uh, arithmetic, but there is one page in there that's arithmetic. Um, and so you can use that at the beginning of the year. You get the kids to do that, um, do that uh, test, and bingo, you know what number things you need to work out, which usually most teachers do at the beginning of the year, okay? So that's the 
and this is basically where to where to find it. You go to our website, Startup Resources, and then there's a page, uh, Startup Units, and uh, start up your class and first week of school page, and then this revised math assessment. So it's just click, 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 click. Okay, and uh, there's another program with uh, which. Uh, uh, Anne Marie Hunter talks about in the math, uh, her math uh, startup your class workshop. Of, uh, Tre Trevor Calkins is a, uh, another program. I used to do math right after lunch, and I would use his pro program uh, as my opening activity. So the kids just knew what to do. They got and and it doesn't. It's not just number skills. It goes through a lot of stuff, and you can use it all, almost all year. Okay, and it's again, uh, Anne Marie Hunter is really good at building math confidence, and it does that. It's a, a great program. Okay, so let's take a look uh, uh, at uh, after lunch on uh, page 22. Um, we're going to do a read aloud again. Uh, and what uh, I just want to mention is um, this uh, handout, which you can download from our workshop from our website. Uh, it's Draw and pre Predict. This is actually made, or at least I got it from um, Faye Brownlee. How many have heard of Faye Brownlee? Yeah, okay, she's quite a famous educator. And basically it's Draw and Predict. So when you're doing a read aloud, this time uh, what I'll do is I'll get the kids to draw a scene uh, from what we've just read, okay? And then predict what they think is going to happen and they write it over here. And for the first use of this is is as a transition activity. So when we've finished uh, and I'm going to transition to the next activity, I'll give out this paper and have them go to their desk and do exactly that, draw and predict. Okay, so it gives you that five minutes to get yourself organized to the next thing. But this is such a useful form. Well, I, I would say don't get intimidated by forms. You can use it by, for all sorts of things. You can have kids do their math here and explain something about their math. So I used to copy 60 copies of this back to back right off the bat and I would use it for lots of different things. Okay, But certainly you can use it uh, in those uh, share and agree strategies and agree on something. Okay. On uh, page 23, if, uh, this is an eco, eco tag, is, a, is a, uh, a minor skills game. It's basically the, uh, the grass, the rabbits, and the, and the foxes kind of ecological balance game. And um, uh, I recommend you teach it and then try not to use it too much. Leave it for the TOC. Okay, because the kids will like to play it. It's a low, uh, low organization game. Um, what you're going to focus on in the first uh, few periods is safety. Okay, like you want to teach the stop signal for for PE. Stop signal for PE is not like stop. It's and stop. So what you're doing is you're giving them oh. I'm going to have to stop in a second, so they get a chance to get stable and stop. By the time you say stop, they should be like stop right then. Okay, so that kind of thing, and also changing and how are you going to manage all that? I always got the kids to change before nine o'clock. Okay, or when they came back from recess, they changed then. Okay, so they're not changing in my class time. They're changing before that. And uh, if it's cold, put your pants back on and so on. But that means that when we get up to the gym. You put your uh, put your pants down there and away you go. Put a ball, put the balls out and get them active right away. I don't believe in having kids sit in a gym. It's it's like crazy. Okay, so get them out there and get them going right away. And for changing afterwards, I always tried to organize my PE so it was right before lunch. Fortunately, the other teachers didn't figure it out because if you finish, you go right o'clock uh, till twelve o'clock, and then the kids are changing on their own time. You don't lose any class time, right? 